Do PRP injections really wear off or is there more to the story? This is a question that I'm asked relatively often, especially because this is what we do in our practice. So we do a lot of PRP injections, we do stem cell therapy as well. However, the bulk of what we do is gonna be platelet-rich plasma. And one of the big things I'm asked is, do these injections wear off or is this a permanent thing? And truthfully, this is an extremely complex question because we really still don't fully understand how these PRP therapy injections are working. We know a little bit, I'd argue we know a little bit more than a little bit, but in the grand scheme of things, we still really don't fully understand how these therapies are working on the microscopic level to improve pain and function in patients. And so we have to answer the question, do these therapies wear off or are they gonna be more permanent long-term changes? In addition to not knowing the full intricate details of how PRP injections are working, there are a lot of other complicated factors that are gonna come into this equation, such as the tissue integrity that we're starting with, the overall health of the patient, and truthfully also the psychosocial components of pain because even if we can restore biologically at the level of the cells, we still may not see significant improvements in pain because pain is a perception by the brain and there are psychological and social factors that factor into whether or not we're gonna see pain relief. But let me first walk you through my story with chronic back pain to give you an example of how these therapies can be long lasting and how most of the time they're not really wearing off. So for those of you who don't know, I herniated two discs in my lower back about 10-ish years ago. I was in a car accident, was then doing some heavy squat and some training because I was still a track and field athlete at that time. And I herniated my L4-5 and my L5-S1 discs. And so with that, I started to develop chronic pain and that chronic pain lasted for about two years. At that time, I thankfully underwent my first PRP injection, which is actually why I do all this stuff today. I had a PRP injected into a lower trapezius tear and my iliolumbar ligament. The physician that I was working with determined and believed that those were contributing to why I was still having chronic pain. Fast forward three months and I was basically pain free. I was back in the gym, I was squatting, I was running, I was doing all the things that I wanted to do. It was the first time in two years that I finally had some pain relief and it wasn't for lack of trying. I had done physical therapy, I had done some medications, I had done a lot of supplements, I was doing things. However, it just wasn't enough and I was still struggling with pain tying my shoes, pain sitting for long periods of time, pain standing for long periods of time, all of these things. And so PRP injections got me out of that hole and got me to a place where I was back doing the things that I wanted to do. Unfortunately, I was in the gym. This was probably after about, I think, we'll call it three to six months after the PRP injection and I re-injured it in the gym. I was doing a flexion-based activity, bending down, doing a deadlift or a squat, I don't fully remember, but I felt a small tweak in my back again and now I was back in the chronic pain cycle where I couldn't get comfortable, I was having continual pain and so because I knew what had worked for me in the past, which was PRP injections, I went back, saw a new provider because I was in a different area than where I was before, new provider and had some palpation guided, prolotherapy, PRP and ozone injections. If I recall correctly, I had about three of those and now I was back to being pain free. I was able to sit in class in med school without having to squirm around in my chair because my back was irritating me and aggravating me. I didn't have to get up and go for walks in order to keep the blood flow moving and all that type of stuff. So I was back to a place where I was able to not have that chronic pain. Unfortunately, several months later, I was sideswiped on the highway. So driving down the highway, big accident happened. This car starts spinning out and sideswipes me on the highway and that re-aggravates and re-injures my pain. I'm now back in the cycle again. But notice that both these times, it's not like the injections wore off. These were new injuries that occurred that just restarted my pain cycle. At this time, I then went and had a bone marrow stem cell treatment. So we extracted bone marrow from my iliac crest, concentrated that, and then we did injections for the SI joint, the facet joints, 
We did epidural, we did the iliolumbar ligaments again, and then we also did a peridiscal injection. We had gotten a repeat MRI, saw that I still had small herniations, but some annular fissures in those discs. And at this time, we were not really doing intradiscal injections at the clinic that I was at, and so we did peridiscal injections. Basically, we put the bone marrow around the disc to try and help that disc to heal. Fast forward about two months or so, and I was back to being pain-free. And from this point forward, I had four and a half years of near 100% pain relief. Sure, my back ached here and there after a long week in the clinic or something like that, or if I had a really heavy squat or deadlift day in the gym, or I was increasing volumes on my runs, I had a little bit of achiness. The odd time, maybe once every few months, I might have felt a little twinged kind of down the leg a little bit, nothing crazy. So I would call this 95, 98% better at this point. And then because I was doing so well and I was in the gym and I was working out and all these things, I'm obviously at risk of re-injuring it because I've had an old injury in the past. And so I was doing some single leg deadlift type stuff and I re-injure it. Again, this is not that the bone marrow procedure wore off. It's just that I had re-injured it from faulty movement patterns, weak core, all of these things that predisposed me to the injury in the first place. So after this injury, I kind of had about a year where we were doing some PRP injections and some platelet lysate injections in epidurals, in the facet joints, in SI joints and ligaments. And it was helping a little bit. It was kind of knocking the pain down, but it really wasn't getting rid of the pain. And so we finally elected to do an intradiscal PRP injection on me, which at this time point was basically a year ago. And within about two months after that procedure, I was 95, 98% better, was back in the gym. I was starting to load it. I was in physical therapy. I was doing all these things because I was now, for the most part, pain-free. And this improvement has lasted outwards of that year. So I'm a year out now and I'm still 95 to 98% better. And so through all of this time, the injections did not wear off. The PRP, the stem cell therapy did not wear off. It's just that I had new injuries. And this is what I tell patients when I'm talking with them. The way that these injections are working is we are getting some micro changes that are actually improving the integrity of the tissues. Now, if we did a repeat MRI today of me I would still have those two herniated discs. I would still have those annular fissures. I might not, but most likely I still do. But does that mean I'm in pain? No, not necessarily, because the, the micro integrity of that area, it's no longer inflamed and those nerves are no longer sensitized. Therefore, I'm not having the pain that I was having before. And so the injections are not wearing off. It's just that I've had new injuries during that time period. And this is something that we see clinically in the literature. So if you look at the literature that's looking at longer term outcomes on these PRP injections, or you look at the registry data that we have that's looking at longer term outcomes, you know, looking out 12 months, 18 months, two years, we don't really see this like fall off in, in outcomes. And so if you look at the literature in corticosteroid injections, as an example, you might get six or 12 months out. And what happens is pain levels are improving, improving, they're better. And then six to 12 months later, all of a sudden it regresses and patients go back down to their baseline. That's when people say like, oh, I had a steroid injection and it wore off after a year. That's because the way that these steroid injections work is that they're, the molecule is actually suppressing inflammation and then at some point that suppression actually wears off and then pain starts to come back because there was no change in the actual integrity of the structure that is contributing to pain in the first place. We don't really see that happening with PRP. Can that happen with PRP? Yes, I've had patients, there's patients in the literature where you do a PRP injection and maybe after 18 months, two years or so, you start to see this slow regression of, of symptoms. And so pain might have been a six out of 10 when it first started. One year later, it's one out of 10. Two years later, it's still one out of 10. Three years later, it's two out of 10. Four, five years later, it's kind of three out of 10. And so you can get this what looks like a, a regression or a wearing off of the injection. However, the other theory that I want to give here is that we are having additional degeneration in tissues as we age. 
This is gonna happen more as we are older. So patients in their 50s, 60s, and 70s are gonna be degenerating and deteriorating on a structural level at a faster rate than someone who is in their 20s and their 30s and their 40s. And so one of the things that could be happening is that we are just getting a continual degeneration in those tissues such that pain is worsening over time. And it's not necessarily that these PRP injections are actually wearing off. And so to kind of sum this up, because I'm rambling a little bit here, it is my belief that for most people, when we see these improvements from a PRP injection, we are not getting a wearing off after several years. We may have increased degeneration, we may have new injuries, but we're not really getting a wearing off or a regression in symptoms because the PRP injection is quote unquote wearing off, but rather other things that are happening. So it gives us more confidence when talking with patients to say, hey, we believe that these PRP injections are actually creating lasting changes and this is supported in the literature. And so you can hopefully have some peace of mind as you move forward here if you're considering getting a PRP injection. The results that you get can be long lasting and in some instances can actually be permanent.